I've got a red and an orange flashing indicator lamp. Uh, I've also got a high voltage sign. The next panel has two 750 milliamp variacs. Uh, I've also got an 8 amp variac mounted on this side here. And I've got a 15 amp variac mounted on the next panel. These switches here will be the momentary on switch for these two smaller variacs. And these two push button switches will be the momentary on for these two variacs here. Each variac has its own emergency stop switch. That way I can switch off only one power supply if I'm using multiple supplies during an experiment. Um, it may be bad for some reason to switch off all of them. Uh, so we may only want to switch off one or two. Uh, but in the case that we want to shut down power to the whole rig, uh, I've got the emergency stop button here, which will be the emergency stop for the control circuit. Um, I'll explain what that is in a minute. But I've also got an indicator lamp here for the control circuit and a main on and off switch for the control circuit, which is lockable. Uh, that's very important for this build that everything, every circuit be lockable physically, um, mainly because of the fact that I've got young kids. I've also got indicator lamps on the control side, on the control circuit uh, for each of the variants. And I've still got to put a few more holes up here into the face panels for uh, indicator lamps on the output side of the variac. So we'll have visual illumination, visual check for input power through the control circuit and we'll have a visual on the uh, output power on the high voltage on the variac side. Uh, I've still got a couple of face panels that I need to make for down here. They will be for um, panel mount fuse holders and also for the switching for the ballasts which are going to be uh, in this unit and down here I have some output uh, plugs for all the variants except for this one here. This one will have its own heavy duty output uh, and I've got that sitting here uh, so that one will be actually mounted in the box. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here, we'll get back into that as soon as I show you a few other things. Well I've finally finished building this HHO chamber. I've got a pressure gauge on the top here, I've got two threaded stainless steel rods. Um, I've also got a stainless steel output gas fitting here, connected to a semi-rigid hose, 6mm, going out to another stainless steel fitting here, uh, and that will connect straight to the bubbler once I get around to making that. So once I've done that we'll plug it in and run some tests but at the moment that's about as far as I've gotten. Okay there's a bit of a close-up on the top panel of the black box. You can see we've got the orange flashing light, the high voltage sign and the red flashing light. Um, that's about it for the top panel. There's a shot of the second panel which has the 8 amp variac here and the two 750 milliamp variacs. You can see where I intend to put the illumination lights for the output on the variacs. Here you can see the next panel down with the 15 amp variac and the momentary push button switches and the spot where I intend to put the other illumination lamp for the output on this variac here. There's a quick shot of the emergency stop switch panel. Uh, as I said, each one is for a different variac. This one here is for the control circuit which will run all of the contactors and control circuitry for all of the variacs. This light here is for the control circuit to indicate that that is on or off. Here is the main switch for the control circuit so we can switch that on and off and we can also lock it. Um, that way None of these variacs can be operated if this is locked up. Down the bottom here you can see the last panel that I've made so far which has all of the output plugs for the variacs and those two big ones on either side there are for low voltage power supplies which will probably end up um, being housed in this big gap here. Now you might remember this old high voltage DC power supply that I made a while back. Um, I've used it a, a few times now and it's a pretty robust little piece of kit. 
Um, I have gone through a couple of transistors, so I'm thinking of current limiting this thing. And I'm going to rebuild it into a box because uh, it's a fairly useful little power supply. Uh, the main reason I'm doing that is because I've just found a third one. Uh, so I'm going to tack that on to the output side and see if we can increase the voltage a bit more and um, give it a bit more insulation. So once I've done that I might upload another video, um, just maybe even showing the build, see how we go. Uh, but we'll definitely do some tests and do a video of that when I get around to it. Here's a quick look at the Variax on the top panel. You can see the two 750 milliamp Variax there and that is the 8 amp Variac. There's a shot of the inside on the 15 amp Variac which is on the next panel. That's the back of the emergency stop switch panel. Now looking at this thing from the back you can see I've mounted a few steel brackets and on the back side of those I've mounted some cable tracking. That way all of the components which are mounted on DIN rails on these white brackets here, um, the wiring can loop back into this and run up the side of the uh, box. That way it's all going to be nice and neat. Uh, so I've got a few rails ready to go just to mount all the components. I've got a few components mounted in there already. This um, bottom rail here doesn't have DIN rail mounted components, it's got capacitors on it. I've got a whole bunch of contactor blocks mounted on that DIN rail. The next DIN rail down there's a whole bunch of other stuff from breakers to timers and relays. I've got a motor control switch right in the far corner over there. I've got a current transformer. Um, I've got some more contactors, a 24 volt power supply, some terminal blocks and uh, down here some more terminals and contactors, surge diverter and on the bottom bracket here which I had to retrofit um, I drilled some holes and mounted these capacitors. They're 2 microfarad 440 volts uh, so it'll give me a total of 12 microfarads. Um, I've also got this guy here. Uh, this one here is a 35 microfarad 440 volt capacitor. So that'll be mounted in there as well. I've also got a whole bunch of other power supplies and bits and pieces to go in here. This one's going in. That's a um, 20 volt power supply. This big Arlec thing is a 12 volt, uh, 15 amp power supply. That's the output plug for the 15 amp Variac. There will also be no printed circuit boards in this thing. No transistors or anything like that. The closest thing I've got at the moment is that little switch mode power supply, that 24 volt one, um, which I'm using just to run the contactors and test everything at the moment but uh, I'll replace that for solid transformer action rectify it and uh, smooth it with a capacitor rather than have printed circuit boards on board um, I've got a whole bunch of other parts here that are all ready to go it's just a case of finishing off the face panels this switch here is going to be another lockout switch for some auxiliary low voltage power supplies. So everything is going to be fully lockable and unless you know how to rewire this thing in, and in which case you're quite welcome to use it, um, you won't be able to turn this on without the keys. I've scored some more of this ceramic bake light and some more lengths of ceramic tubing as well so I've got to put all of that away. Um, Found some circle pieces here as well, and I've got some large diameter discs there. They're about 475 millimeters in diameter. Uh, for those of you that are metrically impaired, that's about 18 and three quarter inches, I think. Um, I've also got some steel frames here, which I'm using for a bench. Uh, that I plan to build ASAP. I've just got to weld some legs on. There's the legs there and then we can put all of that together. I've got some cross rails ready to go for that. But um, 
Uh, and over here I've got a little Flymo blower, which I plan on stripping down, extracting the motor, and using that for a rotary spark cap. I've also got another motor from a blower as well, which is more powerful, which I plan on using for the spark cap that I'm currently building. Uh, I'm building up a, a bit of a collection of this ceramic stuff now. Um, over here, you can see up on the shelf, I've got a whole pile of it over here. I've got some longer lengths up there. Um, so it's going to be pretty useful stuff. I'm finding a lot of uses for it. And I'm getting a lot of good types of material from suppliers uh, and manufacturers like this stuff here is called knee bar grey. Now there's a whole range of this knee bar stuff. It's a um, composite rubber and cork material and the knee bar grey was actually made specifically for ABB's uh, transformer and switch gear requirements and it's a it's a heavy duty gasketing material. It's a universal sort of a product in that you can use you know, anything against this from alcohols to oils and antifreeze it can pretty much do it all uh, so I've got a few sheets of that at different thicknesses to be able to cut my own gaskets and form seals on pretty much anything uh, it's got a good temperature range but yeah the knee bar grey is specifically for transformers okay until next time thanks for watching please subscribe and leave comments <laughs>